Alrighty, thank you very much ladies and gentlemen. We're back now um, for someone who's going to compare a bird, a guitarist and a raised platform. Uh, everyone please welcome. All good? Yep. Hey, so a bird, a guitarist and a raised platform walk into a bar. Now, I've been trying to come up with a good punchline for that setup since I first came up with the title in May without any success. So I'm just going to talk about content management systems instead. For the next half hour, we'll be taking a tour through Django CMS, Mezzanine, and Wagtail, which are probably the three most popular Django-based CMSs. We'll focus mostly on, on the developer experience and talk a bit about the user experience for content editors as well. So rather than trying to talk about every feature in all three, we'll go a little deeper into the basics that you'll use in nearly every site. Hopefully at the end of the talk, you'll have a feel for what it's like to work with all three of these systems. These are our three contenders. Wagtail is the newest, reaching 1.0, I think sometime around last year's PyCon AU. It was built by Torchbox, a UK web agency who originally worked with Drupal and still do today alongside Wagtail. Django CMS has been around uh, since 2007. It's backed by a Swiss agency called Divio. And Mezzanine hit 1.0 in 2012 after first being announced in 2010. It's created by Stephen McDonald, an Australian developer, and he's part of a core team of six who maintain it. We'll start by looking at their data models, which underpin their design, then pop up to the admin user interfaces and see what they like to use. We'll have a quick look at each one's getting started process. Then we'll go through, through the three common ways of extending your site, custom page types, custom stream fill blocks and plugins, and adding multiple views to pages. Finally, if we get time, we'll have a quick look at uh, the unique deployment options each one offers before wrapping up. So let's start at the data model. This might seem like an odd place to start, but it isn't. Each of the three systems structures its data very differently, and the way they do so not only reveals how each system thinks about the structure of a site, but also informs a lot of the APIs and user interfaces you'll see throughout this talk. Now, the obvious place to start is Mezzanine. It has the simplest, most straightforward data model of the three. And if I were building a CMS from scratch without having seen any of these three, it's probably um, something that, uh, I'd probably end up with something that looks a lot like Mezzanine. There's a model called page with one instance for every page on your website. Uh, and all the content and the metadata is stored in that model. Pages are laid out in a tree and you can have different kinds of pages with different fields on them. Uh, each of them inherits from a concrete base model called page. Mezzanine comes with a few, a rich text page, a link page that does redirects and a few others. And you can add even more by subclassing page in your own model. Wagtail's structure is very similar. It has a tree of pages, different page types and subclasses of a concrete based model called page. Wagtail also has revision control that not only saves past versions of a page, but also lets you save draft future versions without publishing them. In contrast, Mezzanine does have a published flag on pages that let you hide drafts from the site. But once a page is published, any changes you make are published immediately. The published version is stored on the model and the rest of the history is stored elsewhere as JSON, but so far I've found you can usually pretend it's not there. The big difference with Wagtail though is that there's no default page types at all. Wagtail does provide a whole bunch of useful field types that don't come with Django, like rich text, but it expects you to put them into page types yourself. This is a bit of a recurring theme with Wagtail, where Mezzanine and Django CMS both provide a CMS that works out of the box. Wagtail's approach is a bit different. Uh, Wagtail provides everything you need to put a site together but expects you to assemble it yourself, sort of like buying a Lego set rather than an off-the-shelf toy. Wagtail's killer feature is Streamfield. As the name suggests, Streamfield is just a regular Django model field, there for you to add to your page types, but it's quite powerful. When you define a Streamfield, you give it a set of blocks, for example, heading, paragraph, or video embed. Uh, your editors can insert these blocks in any order they like into the field, and internally it's all serialized as JSON. Streamfield is a sort of meta Lego block. It's a Lego block in the sense that you have to put all the pieces together yourself before you can put it in front of your content editors. Um, and also in the sense that, that you give them Lego blocks, tiny pre-made bits of page they can assemble, assemble a bunch of different ways. And Streamfield is especially great for when your designers come up with, come up with mag magazine style pull quotes or sidebars or other things like that. Things your content editors will use as part of larger blocks of text, but you can't predict how or where ahead of time. So you can't just put them into the templates and integrating them into something like CK Editor is going to be like pulling teeth. Django CMS is totally different. There are no page type models here at all. Instead, each page has placeholders, which you can fill with plugins. Which placeholders you get and where, you're, where they're located on the page depends on which of your templates you choose. So I guess this makes templates a sort of page type analog. The actual database structure is very different too. There is a page model which stores basic information about the page and each page has one or more titles. Despite its name, title, the title model doesn't just sort the page title, but anything that's language specific for that page. There's a placeholder model, one instance for each placeholder, and a plugin model, one instance for every plugin. Plugins use multi-table inheritance, so there's also a different table for each plugin type you have. 
Um, and your page is structured in a tree. Plugins can contain other nested plugins, so they're structured in a tree too. Oh, and Django CMS stores two copies of each page in the same table, one live, one draft. So there's two copies of this entire structure. This can be a bit of a gotcha when querying your pages. You have to remember to filter out the draft ones or you get lots of multiple objects returned errors. Now that we've looked at the fundamental structure beneath each of the three systems, we're going to jump up to the very top layer and talk about the admin UIs that content editors interact with. I apologize, this is gonna be out of sync because I, it broke, but uh, the first thing you'll notice about Wagtail's admin interface is it's not the default Django admin. <laughs> uh, it's been built from the ground up, and so we're gonna go edit a page with, this, uh, with a stream field now so you can see what that looks like. Uh, you'll notice all the click targets are reasonably big, which makes it the best option for leap by leaps and bounds if your content editors are going to be editing from, say, iPads. And so we're adding in a new paragraph block here. Um, and it is sort of responsive, but it doesn't go all the way down to phone size, so tablet to the limit. So we've just added a text block to our stream field, and that's what the stream field looks like. Mezzanine's admin panel is literally just the Django admin. It has some slightly different CSS, and a few things are moved around, and when you go into edit pages, you get this tree view. Other than that, if you've used the Django admin, you've used Mezzanine's admin, and there's nothing really revolutionary here. Not that that's a bad thing. It does the job, and it does it well. What is revolutionary is an optional feature you're about to see um, called inline editing. When you're logged in and you're browsing the site, you can click a button in the corner, which the video will click in about a second, uh, and little yellow edit buttons appear all over the page, like that, each linked to a rectangle around some content. Click one of those, you get a pop-up, and you can edit the content without even leaving the page. It is rather limited. You can't add or delete pages, for instance, only edit them, but it's great for the 20% of things you need to do 80% of the time on a site. Um, now, when I first started using Mezzanine, I thought that front-end editing um, or inline editing was a gimmick, a minor time saver at best. Um, but of course, I already knew my way around a CMS. For our content editors where I was working at the time, learning a new interface took them time, and editing web content was only a small part of their job, so they had other things to do with that time as well. But they already knew how to navigate around the front end of a website, which meant the new interface they needed to learn was a grand total of two clicks, which they picked up instantly and um, remembered immediately. Adding new pages was something they only need, needed to do rarely, so they just emailed me and got me to do it. Now, Mezzanine has front-end editing as an option, but Django CMS is different. It's all front-end all the time. Um, as you can see, there's a menu bar at the top of what is otherwise just our regular site, and a couple of seconds ago, we double-clicked on something, and um, we got this pop-up, which we can use to edit it. Um, you'll notice the process of switching between Oh, geez, I'm going too fast. <laughs> to add and remove plugins, you switch to the structure view. I'm adding a new plugin now, adding in a video. Um, and everything else, like um, administering pages, you can launch from the menus at the top, um, which will bring out a little fly out from the left hand side. Um, and you'll notice the process of switching between editing different plugins is a bit more involved than moving between different stream field blocks. Because of that, there seems to be a tendency towards uh, Django CMS plugins being a bit more coarse grained, whereas in stream field, you might have a single block per paragraph. Now, you might not have guessed it at first glance, but by now you've probably noticed Django CMS uses Django's built-in admin as well. Both the flyouts and the pop-ups are just Django admin views, and there's a menu option to bring up the Django admin homepage in a flyout. So now we'll look at the first impression that uh, each CMS gives you as a developer and when you get started with it. Now, the Mezzanine installation experience is the simplest of them all. Mezzanine project works exactly like Django's Django admin start project. In fact, it's actually based on start project. But unlike Django itself, you get a fully working site. I mentioned that Mezzanine comes with a bunch of basic page types to get you started, but the default Mezzanine project also comes with some templates as well, built on Twitter Bootstrap. So all you need to do is run Mezzanine project, then the usual things you need to do with a new Django site, and you have something that's 100% ready to use. If you know that your site is going to be mostly built-in page types, you can push this up to a server straight away, and your content editors can get a head start on building the content while you work on the templates and whatever custom page type you do need. The Wagtail installation experience is basically identical. The only difference is you don't get any templates at all by default either. Wagtail's Lego block approach means you have a, a bit more work ahead of you before your site is up and running. Django CMS is a little different. <laughs> It has an installer in a separate distribution. Separate distributions, by the way, are a recurring theme in Django CMS, uh, which asks you a bunch of questions before shelling out to pip, installing things for you, and running migrations. If it fails, for whatever reason, it helpfully deletes everything for you. Um, our DNS at work is a bit flaky when you're on a Linux host, uh, so this gets pretty old pretty fast. 
Um, and this is the requirements.txt that Django CMS installer creates. Uh, and you can see what I mean about separate distributions being a recurring theme. Um, if you're at the back, you can't, might not be able to see, but all of those URLs are a single plugin. Um, they're packaged at individual distributions, and new versions are released independently of each other, as far as I can tell, which makes upgrading a mess. To make matters worse, everything is pulled down from the master branch on GitHub, and no, as far as I can tell, those query strings don't do anything. As a result, at work, we've had a bunch of times where we've deployed out to production, only to have it explode where development or staging was just fine. And these packages are on PyPI too. I, I don't know why it's like this. Um, but all three CMSs also have an easy documented process to turn a plain Django project into a Wagtail, Django CMS, or Mezzanine one. Wagtails is the simplest, and Django CMS is the, is the most involved, but they're all pretty straightforward. You could use this to bolt a CMS onto a project that already has some other functionality. Or if you have an internal Django project cookie cutter that we use, like we do at work, you can add your CMS as an option and make your CMS projects and your regular Django projects more consistent with each other. Now we're gonna get into the actual nuts and bolts of building sites with these three systems, and we'll start with making some page types. As an example, we'll make a page type for an event. We'll start with Mezzanine. This is a pretty straightforward Django model. The only thing that's different from your bog standard Django app is we inherit from page, and that we're using the rich text field Mezzanine provides for our description field. Then we need to make it editable in the admin. Because Mezzanine's admin is just Django's admin, we do this the same way we would any other Django app, but with a custom admin class. Of course, we could subclass page admin further if we wanted to make modifications to the admin UI, but we won't for now. And the last step is adding a template to render our custom page types. Once again, ordinary Django template. We don't even need to write any code to wire it up to the model, just give it the correct name and Mezzanine will find it. Now you'll notice everything is wrapped in these editable template tags. Uh, those are hooks for mezzanine inline editing, which we saw before. Adding these template tags is all you need to do. Wrap it around a bit of content, pass in the fields you want to make editable, and it just works. Now, when we define our custom page type in Wagtail, we can do something very similar. The only thing that's changed here from mezzanine are the imports. That's where the similarity ends, though. Admin configuration is done on the model itself by assigning a list of panels to content panels. And we have to list all of them manually because it won't automatically pick up all the fields like mezzanine does. Wagtail's panels are similar to widgets, but a bit more freeform. You can see we've got a field row panel that has a bunch of field panels inside it, for instance. We haven't used them here, but Wagtail has a bunch of other built-in panels with things like choosers for linking to other pages, images, or downloadable media. Now, we're adding things to content panels because we want to set what's on the content tab of the editor. Um, the editor also has a promote and settings tab, which we can change using promote panels or settings panels. Um, and if we want to change what tabs are there completely, we just add another four lines of code. Now, I mentioned that Wagtail doesn't give us any predefined page types out of the box. So we're also going to make ourselves a basic page type for general content on our website. And this time, we'll use a stream field. For how powerful they are, defining a stream field is quite simple. You just pass in a list of all the blocks you want to make available, and that's it. Uh, nearly everything that's available as a model field is also available as a stream field block, plus some more. Uh, you can see here we've used a char block, rich text block, image chooser block, and embed block, uh, which is for embedding things like YouTube videos. Uh, but there's also URL block, date time block, Boolean block, equivalents to all the other Django model fields. Stream field gets really, uh, even more powerful though when you start using structural blocks. Here we've replaced our simple image chooser block with a struct block, which means that any time one of our content editors goes to add an image, they'll get both an image chooser field and a field to enter a caption. We've also set a custom template to render our struct block, which is something, something you can do with any block, but it's most use, uh, useful on structural blocks. Wagtail also has a list block, which is a homogenous list. Every item in it is the same kind of block, which we've used here to let our users embed carousels within articles. And the last kind of block, uh, structural block is a stream block, which lets you essentially embed a stream field inside a stream field. In fact, a stream field is, at the top level, a single instance of stream block. The other thing we're using here is an alternate style of specifying structural blocks. We can subclass them instead of calling them, and through the magic of metaclasses, it works the same way. This is a really neat syntax for making our structural blocks reusable. It's doubly neat, because instead of passing a list of block types, uh, we can pass stream field a single stream block to use, which gives us a mechanism for reusing our stream field definition. So going back to our event page, suppose we want to use a stream field there as well and we want to, have, want to have all of the block types available on all our other pages, plus a special one to highlight stream speaker profiles. To do that, we can just subclass our content block and add our special block to the list. Now, when we were looking at Wagtail, I didn't show you any templates at all, because the Python code was where all of the action happened, and the templates were basically what you would expect. In Django CMS, it's the opposite. 
everything happens in the templates and there's almost no Python code to change it all to make a new page type. All we have to do is insert our uh, placeholder tags into our template and we're good to go. What this means is, while running Mezzanine can get, uh, get you up and running with zero configuration, Django CMS is the, probably the simplest to actually get a finished site going. In Mezzanine, you can sort of do the same thing by supplying a custom template for just the built-in rich text page type, but only if every single page is going to have one single big block of content. This placeholder and plugin structure allows for a lot more flexibility without custom code. So Django CMS lets you go a lot further without writing any Python. And this isn't by accident either. On Divio's blog, they talk about competing with WordPress, which, as Donna and Russ discussed this morning, uh, you can use without actually being a developer. And this sort of thing, and Aldrin, which we'll talk about later, uh, means that I think they're in with a chance. So on our site, we also have a blog. Uh, we'll be writing articles targeted at developers, so we want to have the ability to add code blocks. Because we've used a placeholder for our content on Django CMS and a stream field on Wagtail, that shouldn't be too hard. We already saw a bit about uh, how you can create your own block types in stream field uh, in the last section using structural blocks, and that's all we're doing here. We're creating a struct block like we saw in the last section, and we're using the subclass syntax like we did before with stream block. In this case, we do need to use a custom template to render our struct block. When we used struct block last section, we gave it a quag called template, and in this, sub in this uh, subclass syntax, we use class meta, like in a Django model. It is also possible to create stream, stream field block types totally from scratch, uh, but the official Wagtail docs are light on the subject, telling the reader to consult the source code for the built-in ones. Fortunately, struct block serves our needs just fine here, and because of the wide array of blocks you can put inside a struct block, it seems like it'd be rather uncommon to go that far. You'd probably only need to in the sort of situations where you'd need to create a custom Django model field, for instance. Here's what the template looks like, as well as the template filter we use to do syntax highlighting. And we've only written about 15 lines total, including all the pigment stuff. And I haven't left anything out, it, it, <coughs> pardon me. I haven't left anything out here except for import statements, and it all works. Now, I mentioned before that Django CMS plugins have their own model, and this is ours. Apart from the fact we're subclassing from CMS plugin, it's pretty standard Django stuff. That was the plugin model, and this is the plugin itself. We're inheriting from CMS plugin base, which is actually a subclass of Django's model admin. Uh, but Django CMS uses it to, find, to define both how the plugin appears in the admin and how it's rendered on the page. The source code.html template we reference there um, is the template to render the actual content, not the admin fields. Now, by convention, plugin class names end in plugin, and the corresponding models don't. Uh, it's a bit confusing because the base class for models is CMS plugin, and the base class for plugins is CMS plugin base, but that's how it is. Um, personally, I find most of my plugins are short and simple, and slitting them up like this means I have two files, one that has half each of eight different plugins, and one that has all the other halves, and switching between the two of them gets annoying. But it's easy to see how this separation could end up helping uh, as the plugins get larger and more complex, and besides, we've already seen that Django CMS has a preference for more or less one plugin per app anyway. Now, there is one really big advantage to the way Django CMS structures its plugins, and that's migrations. Because each plugin owns its own model, you can change the structure of your plugin down the track using the full power of Django's built-in migrations. In Wagtail, on the other hand, if the structure of your stream field blocks change, you're on your own. And because um, if your change is strictly additive, because stream fields are stored as JSON, you'll probably be okay. But if you need to do something like a data migration, especially if, say, your block is distributed as a package on PyPI for anyone to include in their own stream fields, you're going to be in for a hard time. Oh, and uh, Django picks up changes to blocks inside a stream field for the purposes of migrations. So if you've changed a stream block that you've reused in a bunch of different models, all of those models will have new migrations to run. The other advantage is that there's a total separation between plugins and pages. So I can install a third party app that provides, say, a blog. And I can use custom plugins like the one we made here, or third party plugins from a totally unrelated app, and the two of them will work together. In Wagtail, at the end of the day, you have to pass all the blocks you want into your stream field on your model. That being said, nearly every time I've used a third-party plugin in Django CMS, I've regretted it. And I often end up writing my own instead anyway, because it didn't quite meet our needs and cause us problems down the track. So the solution to this for Wagtail is obvious when you think about it, and it comes back to Lego blocks. If you were to write a third-party blog app for Wagtail, the most idiomatic way to do it wouldn't be to provide ready-made models. Instead, you'd write something, maybe some abstract base classes that provide all the functionality you need in the blog. RSS, archives, category filters, and so on. 
that other developers can snap into their own models with a few lines of code. Mezzanine, unfortunately, gets left out of this one because it doesn't have anything that lets you intersperse different kinds of content in an arbitrary order the way that Streamfield and Django CMS's plugins do. Of course, while Django CMS's data model is radically different to Mezzanine's, it would be entirely possible to build something like Wagtail Streamfield uh, for Mezzanine. In fact, because Mezzanine's admin is just Django, you could write a Django admin widget for something like Streamfield and then use it in Mezzanine as well as any other Django app you wanted. Nobody's done that yet, as far as I know, but it's an interesting thought. Now, there's a bunch of <coughs> pardon me. There's a bunch of cases in a CMS where you want to have one page object be responsible for a handful of different views. Um, for this one, we'll keep using the blog example. The way we've structured our blog is we have a blog entry page type, which has the post content for an individual post. All our blog entry pages are child pages of our blog page type, which displays a list of them. Like I said before, blogs need archive views, category filters, and RSS feed. The RSS feed is what we'll focus on, but the same principles will apply to all the others. Mezzanine has a feature called page processes. They're a rather flexible way of hooking into the request response process uh, for a particular page type. They're called on every request to that type, and you can either return a dictionary, which gets added to the template context when the page is rendered, or return a HTTP response object and short circuit Mezzanine entirely. What the documentation doesn't mention is that if you visit a URL for a page that doesn't exist, before it returns 404, it'll check to see if there's a page that does exist above it in the URL hierarchy and call its page processor. So all we have to do here is a little bit of poor man's URL routing and we can return our RSS feed from the right URL. Wagtail's solution is a little more in depth. Wagtail has its own router to resolve URLs to pages. Wagtail will call the route method on the root page, which will by default consume a path component, find a child that matches, and recursively call its route method until we get to the method of the page that we actually want to render, which will return a route result. So all we have to do here then is override that route method, check to see if the path was what we're looking for, and if it is, we'll tell Wagtail to render our page with a special quag. Unfortunately, because of Wagtail's URL conf, we can't match rss.xml, or anything that has a dot in it, or doesn't end with a slash. The code here will match slash rss slash instead. Before we move on to Django CMS, we'll just rewind a bit to where I said the calls to route work, <coughs> calls to route walk recursively down the page tree. That make, makes it the only one of the three where we can control how child pages are routed. Here, for example, is a simple implementation of that year, month, day slug URL pattern that a lot of blog engines use. Now, if Wagtail's approach to this sort of thing is in-depth, for Django CMS, you'll need a scuba license. Django CMS has app hooks, which are not only the most powerful solution of the three, but also the most hacky. As the name suggests, app hooks allow you to hook an entire reusable Django app onto a page. Unfortunately, there's no way to automatically attach an app hook to a particular page type. To set up an app hook, you have to manually create one page against, <coughs> sorry, manually create one app hook against a particular page in the web UI. Once you do that, the URL module you return from get URLs is mounted in the URL hierarchy, just like any other Django app, but dynamically, which is the hacky bit. So long as we use URL namespaces properly, we can have it mounted multiple times on multiple app pages. So our urls.py and our views.py look exactly like any other Django app, which is of course the powerful bit. If you're a fan of class-based views, you'll be pleased to know they work exactly as you expect here. The only thing that's a tiny bit tricky here is figuring out which page object we're attached to. Uh, since Django CMS doesn't automatically pass, us to, pass it to us by default, we have to go looking for it. Now we move on to deployment. Of course, sites built in all three of these CMSs are just Django apps. So you can deploy them the same way you'd deploy any other Django app. But each of the three CMSs has its own unique deployment approach. And while we don't have time to go into them in detail, I um, will tell you about them a little bit. The default mezzanine project uh, template provides a surprisingly in-depth 685 line fab file for deploying the site. Fabric, by the way, is a tool for doing deployments over SSH, sort of the love child of SSH and make. Um, to get your mezzanine site up and running on the public internet, all you need to do is set up a VM you can SSH into, run these commands, and your site is ready to go, running on top of Nginx, GUnicorn, and Postgres. Wagtail's deployment option is the most unique of the three. Wagtail has built-in support for Django Medusa, which is a package that generates static sites from Django projects. In theory, this means you could have a blazing fast, always up, pre-generated site served to your visitors by something like CloudFront, while Wagtail's edit editing interface is safe and sound, 
inside your firewalled corporate network or running on your laptop. Unfortunately, the most unique option is also the most disappointing. Django Medusa is unmaintained, deprecated, and doesn't work at all on Django 1.9. There is third-party support for a similar package called Django Bakery, but the integration package describes itself in, in all caps as a sample. Um, so hopefully Django Bakery support will be part of Wagtail eventually, because I think this is a really cool way to deploy sites. Now if Wagtail's deployment option is the most unique, Django CMS's is the most in-depth. Divio, the company behind Django CMS, have just recently started up a service called Aldrin Cloud. Aldrin Cloud is a platform serv uh, as a service for Django apps, uh, oriented towards Django CMS. It also picks up Wagtail Slack by having a community supported Wagtail option, and you can install any other Django app on it, so you could probably get Mezzanine running on it as well. So quickly before we go to questions, if we even have time for them, let's recap. Uh, of the three CMSs we've looked at, Mezzanine is deliberately simple and focused with a straightforward data model, and it's the one that's most recognizably just Django. Uh, its batteries included with built-in page types and templates, uh, but those batteries are simple too. It has a simple inline editing interface that is a huge usability win for your content editors, but it lacks the flexibility of Wagtail stream fields and Django CMS plugins. Wagtail is very much not batteries included. Instead, it has what I've called today a Lego block philosophy, where it provides you with components you can snap together with a few lines of glue code to give you something that more closely suits your needs, with only a little more effort than something built in would involve. It does leave you on your own with templates, though, showing it's very much oriented towards building something proper with a custom design. Wagtail's not too bothered about the just throw it up on the web quickly use case. Its data model and really a lot of the developer experience feels a lot like Mezzanine Extended. The headline addition is, of course, Streamfield, a powerful tool we've talked a lot about today, which lets you have some of Django CMS's flexibility. Unlike Mezzanine, though, it's not afraid to replace bits of Django with something built from scratch to better suit its specific needs, in particular the admin. Finally, all the action happens in attributes and methods on your page models. When you're working on something simple, this is a breath of fresh air compared to Django CMS where you're constantly flipping back and forth between files. But when things get a bit more complex, it's on you as the developer to make sure you split everything up logically so you don't end up with a 10,000 line models.py. It doesn't, however, have an inline editor and it plans to keep it that way. Django CMS's data model is radically different to the other two, being centered around plugins rather than pages. Plugins mean your data structures can, uh, the data structures that hold your content are far more loosely coupled from the page than the other two, which makes them more flexible. It also goes all out on inline editing. It's the primary way to edit the site, and there's nothing you can't do through it. It has templates instead of page types, which means you can create them without knowing Python, but it also makes it harder to hook things like app hooks in. So that's all there is. Uh, thank you to my wonderful partner, Michelle, who put together this title card and the Wagtail Lego block illustration. Uh, thanks also to Ducky, who helped me come up with the concept of the talk. Tennessee, whose proposal feedback was so in-depth it was longer than the proposal was. And Matt, Nick, and Ducky again for their feedback on the talk content itself. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if anyone has any questions, uh, come up and, and join the queue. Um, just to sort of get things started, at the end you did you did say, uh, like, this is a, a bullet point, this is the strengths and, and weaknesses yep. of each one. Would you care to give a brief summary of <laughs> a, a brief summary of the sorts of sites that each one would be well suited towards? Well, I think both Wagtail and Django CMS, because they have that the plugins or the um, the stream field, it's, it's difficult to imagine a site that either of those two couldn't do. Um, Mezzanine, I think, is a little bit simpler, and it's is very much deliberately so. It sort of always seemed to be focused on being the sort of 80% use case. Um, other than that, it's yeah difficult to imagine that's anything the other two couldn't do. Thanks for the talk and for the comparison. Um, when I come to you today and say and ask you which of these CMS should I choose for a block, which would be your pick, or why would you not pick one? Um, for a blog. Um, Partly because of my experience with Aldrin News Blog, which is sort of the de facto blog app for Django CMS, I'd probably not choose that one. Um, especially if you want Python 3, because it of course, might well, now. Python 3, uh, Postgres, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, so that's had some difficulties with Python 3. Um, Wagtail, if you have the, the time to, to deal with the Lego blocks and put them together, um, Wagtail has Streamfield, which is 
which is great to use, especially if you want, like we had in the example, code blocks. Um, but mezzanine is the quickest option. Okay. So it really depends on what you're trying to achieve, really, with your blog. All right, thanks. That was an epic talk, thank you. Thanks. Uh, um, I just want to clarify, you were saying uh, that they, uh, Django CMS and Mezzanine were both okay to integrate into an existing Django app uh, Yeah. System. So, so yeah, all three you can integrate into existing Django apps. Yep. It's just a matter of adding some stuff to your installed apps and a few um, template context processes and stuff like that. Um, and it's all three of them Wagtail as well. Um, Wagtail, you do have the separate admin. Um, the new Wagtail admin does support ed um, editing Django models now. It didn't used to, but that's been added in, I think, 1.5. Um, but other than that, the other two will work just fine with an existing Django project as well. Cool. Okay, thank you. Okay.